County Government. Uh, at this time, before we get started, we want to uh, have our invocation by uh, Supervisor Tatum and then the Pledge of Allegiance by Supervisor Smith. Let's all stand, please. If you will, silence your phones for us. Thank you. Good to see everyone here today and, and uh, as we come together and, and conduct county business. And uh, just uh, Chairman Thompson said, we're grateful that you're here to take part. And at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you and praising you for all you do for us, Father, all the many wonderful blessings of life. And we thank you for this opportunity that we have to conduct a portion of county business. And Lord, we pray that everything that we do and say will be according to your will. And Father, we ask you for wisdom now in everything that we say and do. And we just pray that, that all of our decisions will be based on good, sound wisdom from you. And all these prayers we ask in your son's name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Let me see your code section. I wanted to see your code. All right. Uh, for clarification purposes, we need to uh, do a motion here. Uh, Supervisor Mitchell is sick. He's got that bug that's going around. He's going to join us in our closed session uh, via the telephone. And so I need a motion for that to uh, take place in a second. And then, Madam Clerk, if you will do a roll call vote on that. And uh, also, our attorney uh, is going to join us uh, via the telephone as well. I don't think we have to do that on him because he's the attorney. But we do have to do it for Supervisor uh, Mitchell. So I need a motion, please. Mr. Go ahead. Oh. I make a motion that we permit uh, Supervisor Mitchell to take part by phone. Second. 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 Got a motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Supervisor Mitchell? I'm sorry. Supervisor Carter? Yes. Supervisor Smith? Yes. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. All right. We uh, will now continue with our previous work session from March the 19th uh, on the firm housing proposal. I will entertain a motion at this time to go into the closed session uh, as it pertains to acquisition of the real property and additional consultation with legal counsel may be required. Supervisor Tatum. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the Franklin County Board of Supervisors will motion to enter into a closed meeting into accordance with 2.2-3711A3 discussion of the acquisition of real property or the disposition of real property, A7 consultation with legal counsel or briefings by staff about litigation or other specific matters requiring legal advice, and A29 discussion of the terms of a public contract of the Code of Virginia as amended. I need a second. 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 Madam Clerk, we do a roll call, please. Supervisor Carter? Yes. Supervisor Smith? Yes. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. Madam Clerk, would it be uh, easier for you for these phones if we go to the uh, uh, Chris's, uh, or there, or you want to go to B75? Conference room? I need to turn my right, mic we'll convene off. in the conference. Now you can hear me. All right. All right, we'll make a. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Tatum, if you will make a motion there for coming out of closed session. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I certify that only public business matters lawfully exempted from the Open Meeting Requirements Act under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act were heard, discussed, or considered in the closed session to which this certification applies, and only such business matters as were identified in the motion by which this closed session was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting to which this certification applies. I need a second. 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 Madam Clerk, we do a roll call, please. <clears throat> Supervisor Carter? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Supervisor Smith? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. Okay. Now we'll go into our regular meeting coming out of the closed session. Now we've got a couple motions that we've got to make uh, that came from uh, the results of that meeting. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As, as a result of our meeting, 
I would like to make a motion to approve that the committee recommendation and reject both proposals for the county-owned Ferrum property as submitted. I need a second. Second. Madam Clerk, will you do a roll call vote on that, please? Supervisor Smith? Yes. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Supervisor Carter? Yes. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Tatum, you've got a motion to make? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion to enter into negotiations with Friends of Ferrum Park for the pur purchase of the county-owned pr property in Ferrum and direct staff and county attorney to nego negotiate the terms with Friends of Ferrum Park. I need a second. Second. Madam Clerk, will you do a roll call vote on that, please? Supervisor Smith? Yes. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Supervisor Carter? Yes. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, at this time we'll begin our public hearing for the consideration of an ordinance amendment pertaining to tax relief for the elderly and disabled. Please note this will be followed by a public hearing on the proposed budget this evening, which will have a separate public comment period later this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to further announce that there will be a separate public hearing on the evening of April the 8th on the subject of tax rates and assessments. All right, we're going to our public hearing on the tax relief for the elderly and disabled, and I think, Mr. Carter, you're going to present. Hey, where's everybody going? Why y'all leaving? <laughs> Y'all done got your way and now you're leaving, huh? <laughs> Don't care what else happens. <laughs> Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm trying not to let my feelings be hurt, but um, it's all right. I, you're the cause of this, buddy. I'm the cause of it. It's all my fault. I apologize. So the, our first public hearing, Mr. Chairman, is the public hearing on amending the county code related to tax relief for the elderly and disabled. So just a summary slide of what was presented um, and the proposed budget of what is be the, the amendments being recommended. So currently, the income limit is set at 25,000. It's capped at that. And then, so we're proposing to increase that to 38,000. And the asset limit or the net worth essentially is uh, at 80,000. And we're proposing to increase that to 110. The exemption is still uh, focuses on the primary dwelling up to five acres. And so what we're looking at is the only items on that code section. We have a handout, so if you're all are all right, we're going to hand that out to you so you can see. It was advertised, but I want you to look at the actual code section language. And so the, this code section in front of you is what we are proposing to amend. Man, he's making you work for it, didn't he? And so, well, I meant to do this between meetings, but we kind of rolled right into the public hearing. So um, the, uh, the next uh, set is possible actions that the board could take pending the, uh, the, the end of the, the public hearing portion. So on the piece of paper you have here, uh, the highlighted in yellow are the only proposed changes that we're proposing to look at for this section. And so this goes back to what we have on the slide in front of us. So the only thing we're proposing is increasing the, the income limit to 38,000 and the net combined financial worth to 110,000. And then on the second page, the back, it's front and back, there is a table and with that table, it reallocates based on a tiered schedule what that exemption looks like. 
So if you'll notice, it, it sets it at that 38,000 and 110,000, and each tier sets from there. So be happy to answer any board questions, comments, or concerns about the proposed amendments to the code section. Has anybody got any questions for Brian? Just a quick one, Mr. Chairman. These dollar figures, Brian, and I don't want to put you on the spot, the 38,000, the 110, yes. how many people do you think that will affect in the county? How many people are we going to help with that? Right, really, there's no way to know. Uh, they file with the commissioner's office, and unless they file, we, we have no access to income tax data. And so I, I really, Mr. Uh, Mr. Carter, I don't think there's a way to, to estimate. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. Yes. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Uh, Mr. Carter, I just want to um, call to everybody's attention um, item C, number three. Um, this is with respect to these thresholds uh, pertaining to all of the owners, relatives, and non-relatives. Everybody that's living in the dwelling cannot exceed these thresholds cumulatively, correct? Yes, ma'am. That, that's the... And that is as the code is written today. That is not an amended change we're proposing, but you are correct. That's my understanding that it is everybody living in the household. And this is an excerpt from state code? This is an excerpt from our county code, which I'm sure has been informed Adopts by state code. code. Yes. Okay. Because okay. I've always had a problem with that personally. Yes, um, I think it's unfair if you've got your grandchild living with you, you know, as an example. Um, that all of a sudden that grandchild is going to become part of the the formula for determining whether you can get elderly and disabled relief. Mm -hmm. I think it ought to be determined on the individual. That's just my opinion. I think it's 22-7. It's the county code that adopts all state codes. We can go... Uh, uh, I don't know the procedure to change that. We'll have to check into that if we change that. <coughs> There is a procedure, uh, but I think we can go greater than, but not less than. I think that's how it's set up. We can go greater than 22-7. We'll have to look into that. Any more questions for uh, Mr. Carter? All right, seeing none. Thank you, Brian. Yes, thank you. All right, seeing none. At this time, we will uh, uh, we'll open the public hearing for those wishing to, to speak relating to the issue of the proposed ordinance change as a tax relief for the elderly and disabled. Madam Clerk, do we have anyone signed up that wishes to speak? Charles and Candace Martin. We'll have a, uh, uh, come forward, state your name and address for the record. If you're gonna do this as an individual or if you wanna do it together, it's three, three minute time limit. Please speak into the mic. My name is Candace Martin, and this is my husband, Charles. We live in Union Hall. And got, what's your address, ma'am? 519 Major Holland Road, Union Hall. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Thank you for members of the Board of Supervisors. We received our assessment tax for real estate. It went up 101.7%. One we just barely can afford our taxes now. We are on a fixed income, and we're both disabled. And right now, on 22, on 2023, the assessed value was land. We have we have a little bit over two acres, one hundred and two thousand dollars. Our house, two hundred and seventy-two. Now it was assessed at the land is now one hundred and seven and two hundred, and the building. Um, the land, the building improvement is 441, and that makes it $549,000 where we live at. And you can't even see the road, you can't even see, see it from the road. It's 755 feet, feet down. It's, it's too much for us to pay being elderly and disabled. We would like to know why the big increase, and can you, can you explain it to us? Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, that's all. Is there one, anyone else here that has not signed up that wishes to speak to the uh, uh, tax relief on the elderly? Anyone else? 
Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Thank you for your interest. Uh, you've got a motion before you to the uh, board here. Uh, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion if the board's ready. I make a motion to adopt the amendments to Chapter 20, Taxation, Article 2, Real Estate Taxes, Division 1, Generally, Section 20-18, Exemption for Elderly Persons in the Totally and Permanently Disabled of the County Code and Ordinances as presented. I need a second. Second. Got a, got a uh, motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, we do a roll call vote. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Supervisor Smith? Yes. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Supervisor Carter? Yes. And Chairman Thompson? Yes. Okay. So that's taken care of. I uh, will go into the public hearing for the proposed uh, uh, FY 2024-25 budget. Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so for the proposed fiscal year 2025 budget, just a summary slide of uh, what was previously presented. And we have a handout on the synopsis that'll be coming around. It's also in the advertisement in the newspaper. But what was presented in the proposed budget was a balanced budget. It looked to set the real estate tax rate, uh, reduce it from 61 cents per $100 to 45 cents. The other tax rates remain unchanged uh, in the proposed budget. So overall, when the net budget combined county and school system is uh, $183,242,441, it is a slight decrease from the current year budget of 0.31%. It is a structurally measured budget. <clears throat> Balances modest new revenue growth with ongoing capital and operation. The biggest piece of the, the budget is to fund the structural imbalance in capital, as we've discussed many times with cost of fire apparatus ambulances three to four times what they were five years ago. And so, uh, but it also, as just recently uh, passed, was, was to propose to provide tax relief. So now that's reality. That tax relief will go into effect. That was part of also the proposed budget. So. Uh, the synopsis, Mr. Chairman, in front of everyone, if there are any particular questions on the categories. But the, as mentioned, the, the net budget was $183 million. When you take the total budget, counting the schools and, and the transfers between the, the locality and the school system and some others, the total budget is $232,121,570 as proposed. So that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions on the proposed budget. So the, the actual budget that we're dealing with is the $183 million. But with the change with that transfer between the funds, the $48 million, that brings it up to the 232 Yes, sir. And that, that would be the total budget that uh, staff proposed. So pending final negotiation, that would be the, the – if the board approved and adopted as presented – and proposed that $232 million would be the appropriation needed in order to accomplish the budget next fiscal year. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, anybody got any questions for Mr. Carter? All right, seeing there's no questions, then uh, we there may be some after we have the uh, public hearing on this. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, what we're getting ready to do now is I'm going to open it up for a uh, public hearing on this uh, proposed budget that we have here. Keeping in mind that uh, we're not going to be voting tonight, we'll have a public hearing uh, on the budget and on their proposed tax rates on uh, uh, next week. April, April, no, it's April the 8th, correct? April the 8th is when that will be uh, on that. Uh, another public hearing on April the 8th at 6 o'clock pertaining to the tax rates and the reassessment. Tonight we're just going to be talking and have a public hearing on this budget proposal that's uh, here uh, in front of us. Madam Clerk, I'm going to open up the uh, 
for public comment. Do we have anybody signed up for that? Um, Carlton Butler. Carlton Butler, 15 Key Lakewood Circle, Manita, Virginia. Thank you, sir. I'd like to take, thank each of you for your service to our community and the opportunity to express my opinions regarding the priorities of Franklin County. <laughs> I ask that you take the following input regarding the budget seriously and not personally. We're experiencing the worst inflation in 40 years due to massive government spending. We as residents must cut expenses to survive while you continue to raise taxes. <clears throat> due to the pandemic, people moved here in record numbers and paid three times what the properties were worth. These values started to decline in 2022. However, they are still overinflated. This year's reassessment indicates property values went up a whopping $4 billion in this year alone. In 2023, personal property reassessment netted a similar result. The values were inflated due to lack of new vehicles <clears throat> and built on the assumption that a used vehicle had been restored to new condition without even appraising them. I know of several cases where these values went up 900% on an assumption, not an evaluation. This is wrong. Collecting our property tax twice a year netted a $20 million surplus. I understand that you have decided to put this money in the emergency fund, but what are your intentions for this money moving forward? You spent $55 million taxpayer dollars on a commercial business park. This was a bad decision that will likely never produce revenue to repay the debt, at least not in our lifetime. It's time to stop funding that project. The reassessment results in a $4 million increase in tax revenue just from the real estate properties alone. The residents of Franklin County want you to cut taxes, not raise them. I noticed in your budget, $5 million debt service. Why are we borrowing money if we have $48 million in reserve? It makes no sense. The law requires that everyone is entitled to equal representation. However, in Franklin County, this is not the case. 60% of all real estate property taxes are generated from Gills Creek and Union Hall districts, leaving approximately 40% for the other five districts. This is not equal representation. The number of votes that a supervisor has should be representative of the amount of tax revenue their district brings in. Otherwise, it's not equal representation. In conclusion, we, are resident, we as residents must cut expenditures during hard times because we are unable to increase our income. All we are asking is that the Franklin County supervisor operate in the same manner. You are elected to represent us and we won't lower taxes. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Sean Love. Hello, my name is Sean Love. I live at 100 Timberlake Drive, Hardy. I appreciate y'all listening today, but I hope that these public comments don't go in art. I want to start off with a quote. It's General Norman Schwarzkopf. Truth of the matter is that you always know the right thing to do. The hard part is doing it. I'll be honest, I hate politics. I believe a few of you here see the struggles that we are having here in the county, I, but I also believe that a few of you have forgotten those struggles. Ten years of misuse of funds by the school board and that of the kiss of death they gave to the two schools this year. And the rest is waiting to see if we're just going to put the nail in the coffin with this tax increase. My taxes are going up 25%, 25%, and we're still closing two schools with a third looking at that. Is that more than the 1%? My math it is. Tax rate increase of 45% per 100. It's a little four cents more than what the Commissioner of Revenue sent out here just prior to all of this. Then we get to asking, hey, look, are we looking at the code and following that 
yes, we're having public hearings, but also where's the referendum for that also? For us here in the county that actually have a vote, or we just rely on going y'all to vote for us. Tax increase by the board, yet again, is it uh, greater than 1% justified? Again, school board's closing two schools. Without a second thought, without a second thought, close two schools. They're looking to close a third one. What skin do you guys have in the game here too? I have a daughter, I have a family here that I want to raise in this county, but not anymore. I want to leave. I'm trying to do my best to think of reasons to stay. I was born and raised here. Been a part of this county for my entire life. And now I want to leave and raise my six-year-old daughter somewhere else. Again, it's a big pill to swallow. Tax increase, closing schools. But remember, truth of the matter is, you always know the right thing to do. The hard part's doing it. Thank y'all. Andrew Lopez. Andrew Lopez. Apparently they left. Lena and Sharon, is it Cogno? Hey, my name is Len Wachno. I live in uh, 850 Chestnut Forest Drive in Hardy. And uh, I have a couple of questions uh, concerning uh, tax relief for the elderly. Um, suppose you, you qualify for the first two uh, uh, you know, criteria, like, like the income, right? And what about if you have five and a third acre or five and uh, 0.1 acre? Does that mean you don't qualify? How do you calculate that? Sir, we don't answer questions during this. You're not going to answer questions you, during that. No, right? sir. No. Check with your commissioner revenue. Right. Is there a flexibility clause in that, or, how, or a formula that go you, how you can calculate that, or you haven't come up with that yet? Yeah, the commissioner. Sir, we don't answer questions during public okay, comment. Fine. Okay. I, I, I'm just. I, I do have a question. If, if you folks have looked at every single expense of the county. And every little tiny detail, and, ha and uh, have you looked at every little uh, significant thing that you could cut? Are there any, any avenues, or any possibilities of cutting certain things that are absolutely not necessary? Have you done that? Are there any programs that are not absolutely essential? I, I do have a question. I guess that will be answered at the next meeting. Sir, we do not answer questions here. We would never get through. Oh, I see. Okay, fine. We do you not answer questions okay. here. Okay, fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Ron Shiflett. Good evening. Uh, my name's Ron Shifflett. I uh, live at 805 Patai Road in, uh, in Son Sontag. And uh, I just want to thank you, each and every one of you for doing this job because it, it's not a fun job. And just thank you for it. Uh, you know, we're, we're in a period of high inflation. The Biden inflation is the highest since the Carter years 50 years ago. That's the highest in my work life. And I'm 74. Franklin County families are paying more for groceries, more for gasoline, more for fuel oil, and a lot of other things. Every time they go to the grocery store, a gas station, where they get their fuel oil bill and a host of other things, it's higher by the month. That's the way inflation is so insidious. I know, I get a report from my wife after every trip to the grocery store. 
and it's it's not a fun time. The cost of living is going up, but the wages and salaries are are actually going down. But see, families don't have taxing authority. They can't tax anybody to make their ends meet. And that's a good thing, I suppose. They have to cut their expenses to make the ends meet. We all do that, uh, particularly right now. Supervisors do have taxing authority. They do have somebody to tax to make ends meet, and that somebody is Franklin County families. It's me, it's all of us, really. This is just not a good time to raise taxes in Franklin County. No, it's incumbent on you supervisors to direct the county departments and the county schools to find places to cut and to cut. It's time for the county to make ends meet the same way families do. We cut till it fits. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a gentleman I came to know. I've, I've lived in Sontag for 24 years, and, uh, and Leland Mitchell was my neighbor. And uh, Leland Mitchell was the first person I met up at Mitchell's Grocery, or the store. And uh, he was the one that corrected me because somebody asked me, what, uh, they knew I was new, of course. They asked me where where I live. I said, well, I live on Patty Road. And Leland says, that's Patty Road. <laughs> so Leland used to sit where you do now, Marshall. He was, uh, that it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Lowell Skelton. Lowell Skelton, uh, 60 Home Place Circle, Monita. I'm not, I'll make mine very short. I'm confused on the budget here. The transfer between funds, is that reserve funds that could actually be used? or So I guess that's my question. The 40, what is it, almost 49 million, if that's reserve funds, I'm just wondering, couldn't some of that be used for the budget rather than the, the taxes? That's all, thank you. Charles Hurd. <clears throat> Good evening, Charles Hurd. I am a resident at 606 East Court Street, Rocky Mountain. Um, I was here, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I was here at the FY25 budget hearing, and I and those of the attendants heard many justifications about the reasons why more revenue was needed by the county. Um, but what we didn't hear were the efforts being made and the achievements and progress towards reducing spending and cutting where it could be cut. For example, I would like you all to look at the county vehicle fleet. If a county employee or official does not need to drive during work hours for official county business, then they should buy their own vehicle to drive to and from work, like the rest of us have to buy our own vehicle to drive to and from our place of employment. So county vehicles should, with a county gas card should only be supplied to any person who works for the county, be it appointed, elected, or hired um, for work hours only during work for official government business. I understand that that doesn't happen, but I'm not gonna give examples. Um, it's hard to talk about the budget without talking a little bit about the proposed tax rates. Um, despite lowering the proposed tax rate on assessed value, my personal tax burden went up by 23%, percent, excuse me. Um, and I imagine this will go to offsetting all the justifications and reasons for the increases. But people who live in rental properties and apartments 
also use the services of the sheriff's department, the county and fire rescues. They send their children to school. They utilize snow removal from their schools. But one of the slides said that the only rate that was being affected was the real estate rate. Why didn't we consider the personal property tax rate as well? If you re-raise the personal property tax a little bit, we could, we could not raise or we could lower the tax burden on real estate rates even more. But right now, as it sits, the increased revenue is being placed solely on the shoulders of land and property owners and homeowners here in the county without regard to people who rent but still use the county services. So that was all I had to say. Um, I understand my question was just rhetorical, but please consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Paul's Warwick. My name is Paul Svorek, 2624 Lakewood Forest Road, Manita. I feared to come up here, first of all, my personal property tax on my boat went from $800 to $5,500 this year. When I protested it, oh yeah, we made a mistake, you're right, it should have only been $3,500. I still don't understand that. But what really irks me is because I protested it, not only did I have to pay $3,500 tax for this year, they sent me a bill for the past three years because they made a mistake in three years ago. Everybody else that they made a mistake on that I know of never had to pay back three years. I did. Second thing, I don't know where you found this company to do the appraisals but they are extremely inconsistent. I live in a seven lot subdivision and the houses pretty much are, are very similar as are, the lots are almost exactly the same. And interestingly enough, one of my neighbors got an increase of 19.4%, which means when you lower the rate to 35 cents, he's gonna pay less in taxes next year than, I, than they did this year. Another neighbor, Amazingly enough, his taxes went up 110%. He's gonna pay a lot more than he did this year. So, and in between the other five houses, go from 19 to 110, some are 70, some are 35. The houses are very similar. So my problem was with the assessment, not so much my, my assessment, but the inconsistency there. The other thing, I, I don't know what the legalities are, but rather than basing your new tax rate, and I know it costs more money to live, everybody has to make more money, I get that. But instead of doing it with this assessment, do it with across the board, whatever number you need, 2%. Make everybody pay the same percentage increase, not 110% and 19%, where some people pay less and other people a lot more. That's what I have to say. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, that's all that uh, Madam Clerk has on her list. But I wanna make sure that everybody has an opportunity. If you did not get to sign up, that's okay. But if you would like to uh, make a statement, if you'll come forward, state your name and address, I'll give everyone a chance. Anyone at all? My name is Randy Hodges, live in Works, Virginia on Route 122. Uh, Your thank, address, please. Uh, 11,100 Booker T. Washington Highway. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. Uh, I have a, I don't really have a complaint about our, our rates, our things. I guess it was, we kind of stayed neutral. It went up some, but it's, I can live with it. Uh, one of the things, living in a highly zoned area, uh, I've been advocating and talking to different ones about this. In the county, we're missing an opportunity here with a compliance officer. Uh, in a, I, I can ride our neighborhood and our district and what I know, what little I know about it, we have a lot of infractions when it came, comes to the rules and regulations from our district 
And when I'm around the county, I see a lot of other things that seem similar. Uh, and I don't, to hire somebody, I know it takes payroll to, to put that in there, and that's tax money. But I think we need to look at this from a perspective of there's, there could be fines and, and different things levied for these infractions uh, that would, I think, more than offset the cost of bringing some issues into compliance. So I think we need to really look at this and not miss an opportunity to make our rules and regulations work better and more fairly. And I, I don't think it would take much to uh, make that person's salary. So I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Linda Panda at 40 Baywatch Drive, Manita. Excuse me, because I'm not a public speaker, so I'm going to start shaking, whatever. I wasn't planning on talking. Um, to the gentleman who said he wanted to move. Ma'am, will you speak into the mic, please? Sorry. Thank you. To the gentleman who said he wanted to move. Um, we're military. We just moved here a couple of years ago after 44 years of military service. And I have five kids in the military. And everybody said, why did you move to Virginia? or to hear, but was it the lake, was it the mountains? And I have to say no, it's because of the wonderful people that are here. And so if you're considering, sir, to move, um, I can tell you in 32 moves, this is a great place to live. So, but with that saying, we built our home here um, right in the middle of COVID. We budgeted for 44 years, our life to retire here. And in that retirement, <clears throat> excuse me, in that retirement, um, with COVID hitting, our house doubled and tripled in the price and we couldn't get out of it. We already had a contract. And I don't mean to make this personal about me because there's many people in the same boat that we are. Um, and in the middle of that build, the interest rates raised. So after my husband now who's disabled, veteran, not 100% so he doesn't get the tax rate, price reduced. Um, our mortgage payment is $6,800 a month. So we live paycheck to paycheck. So the moment that that few little bucks go up, and my, we make a nice living, but you're taking it all away. Not you guys, but COVID did. So I don't want to have to think after we rested here that we have to sell our home now because of high taxes and whatever. So just want to say that and thank you so much for your service um, to our community and I know you don't get paid very much but thank you and God bless you. Anyone else? I want to make sure everybody's got an opportunity to speak. Anyone else? Tried again. Hopefully, I do better than last week. David Resendiz, 1530 Buffalo Ridge Road, Firm, Virginia. Um, you know, I understand county stuff. We need taxes, you know, to the many things that we have. But echoing what a lot of people say, we're all struggling. It's hard. Uh, whether we have large incomes or small incomes, um, you know, we all have to tighten up our belts to live, feeding kids. Man, it, it's been a struggle all winter for me. My work slows down, and, you know, i got to do what i got to do. So as, you know, the county and stuff, I mean, there's many things. I know y'all are looking at everything, and you got all these well-educated people with the numbers and stuff to work on things. And uh, But, you know, we just got to find a lot of the things, a lot of doing away with what some of the people said, maybe the extra vehicles these uh might get upset some people i hope not but you know our fire equipment i've been a volunteer firefighter big majority of my younger teenage years and i believe in good equipment but you know we can look in it doesn't have to be top it's going to be top of the line to keep people safe you know doing the job but you know some of these prices are outrageous there's other companies out there and really we ought to be supporting the smaller businesses instead of giving it to these multi-million dollar companies and you know just look at other avenues maybe i understand there's a process of 
doing business with the government, well, maybe we ought to make it easier where they can get signed up with the county, whether it's purchases or doing the contract and work or anything, because it's a lot of red tape in it for somebody to come in and, you know, go through the process. And, um, you know, so, yeah, and the again, the taxes – we talk about, okay, we want to try to keep the property tax or, you know, the real estate, this assessment, we're going to try to save here. But then the other week I hear y'all say, well, we're going to look at food tax. We're going to look at the cigarette tax, bad habit, but you know, some of us like it. And, you know, so how are we really saving? We're going to save over here, but over here, this hand's trying to say, hey, I'm going to raise taxes on you, you know? And like I say, there's a lot of people in this community there's a lot of people younger than me, uh, my age, and again, I you know believe in looking out for the elderly and stuff. But there's a lot of youngers, and if we want to keep them here and we want the kids here, we need to look into it. And another thing, I come up with this weird thing middle of the night last night. We talk about had a talk with several uh, births are down and deaths are up. Is that because we don't have births here in the county hospital? It's in Roanoke. So do those births that a county residents is being in Roanoke, so it counts towards their birth rate and the amount of people? Because I see a lot of people in Franklin County, a lot of traffic. So maybe y'all smarter and can dig into that and see if that's part of it. Thank y'all. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come forward and speak? Okay. Anyone? Last chance. All right, I'll close the public hearing. Thank you for your interest in the county government. I uh, appreciate everybody being here. The uh, Whitlow has a paper to pass out. Uh, we need to look at this. It's in regards to our workshop coming up. You got those papers, please. going to pass these out these came from uh, from uh, our uh, it's in regards to the uh, fair from Kevin he's going to be at our workshop on uh, April the 2nd he's asked that you read through that make your notes on it and bring it back with you when you come so that uh, gives him some guidance and direction all right well all that being said then this concludes our meeting and we will recess. I want to make sure, I want to make tell everyone, and again, uh, to please note that there will be a public hearing on April the 8th at 6 o'clock here pertaining to the tax rates and reassessment. And that also deals with, we did make note when we did not only the real estate, but it also deals with personal property. That was all uh, attached to that as well. So it was just not real estate. It was all that. So we stand at recess until Tuesday, April the 2nd at 3 o'clock. Thank you.